central government. They've got the unlimited power of the central banks to issue fiat made-up currency. And their plan is so diabolical, so wicked, so corrupt, it's like wilder than a James Bond evil villain plot. I mean, the movie Moonraker about a plan to set up a world government and kill everybody, you know, they got the plots for that from real government documents like EcoScience. Fleming, the, the wrote, worked for the MI6 that wrote the books, admitted that. And, and he did write Moonraker under another name. But, but I forget the exact name of it. It wasn't Moonraker. But the, the point is that They've got that going for them, but once people find out this is really true, I mean, when I get up on air and go, here's the Army purchase orders for FEMA camps. Here's the Army hiring people for domestic internment resettlement programs. You know, here's the actual code on it. When I show you mainstream news articles, this is out of the Hill, you know, big major newspaper in D.C., and it says governors oppose DOD emergency powers. And they sent a letter, the heads of the governor association, saying, what is this? You can't federalize the states and put troops on the streets. They were responding to what now has come out in the news. And that is these reports out of the AP and the progressive. Governors oppose DOD emergency powers. And then that other headline I was uh, mentioning earlier, the Pentagon wants authority to post almost 400,000 military personnel in U.S. And then I've got articles here where they're training to take over the cities and admitting that they're going to do it. In fact, I had that here in my stack. National Guard takes over school and swine flu vaccine riot drill. And then I can go back a few years and pull up stuff like the Pensacola News Journal, where the Marines unannounced take over the middle school, point guns at the kids' heads. The kids think it's real. And then the Marines say, oh, the president wants you to know what martial law is like. That was in the newspaper. Folks, this is a real program going on. Stuart Rhodes, with all of this backdrop happening, and then we've got the Southern Poverty Law Center coming out and viciously attacking you and I and others nationally. I mean, th this report is being one of the top news stories the last three days on every major newscast. Does that creep you out, but at the same time make you proud that you're actually having an effect to know that over and over again, myself especially, get singled out as this enemy. I, I mean, the, 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 the full government focus is on us and trying to demonize these town halls. That's right. I mean, here's, here's the bottom line. This is why I found Oath Keepers in the first place. The head is rotten. We have the focus from the, from the bottom up, from the county level on up in our state legislatures. But then we might run out of time, and that's why I found Oath Keepers to be sure that, or at least do the best we can to make sure that the troops will not follow the orders. And sure, that threatens whatever they have intended for us. I mean, what could be wrong with us reaffirming our oaths unless they have bad plans, unless they have intentions to issue orders that we would, would not, not want to follow because it's unconstitutional. And so I think that uh, the more they attack me, the more I know I'm doing what's right. That's how I look at it. Well, you just made a great point. When we've got the government documents attacking us and attacking Ron Paul and attacking libertarians and attacking returning veterans and gun owners, that is absolute proof that they are bad and that our analysis of their system was correct and that my only apology is, Mr. Rhodes, is that I, as bad as I said it was, I haven't told the audience and, and fully grasped myself just how real this is. I mean, intellectually knowing something is happening, intellectually knowing it hurts to be in a car wreck and, you know, flip your car is one thing. But actually being in the car, breaking your ribs, <laughs> knocking your head out, you know, the window, getting 20 stitches is another thing. Exactly. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. I mean, intellectually, I know getting the flu doesn't feel good. But when you're actually vomiting your guts out, it's a different thing. Uh, can you can you comment on that? I mean, to actually see this happening. Oh, absolutely. Look, look back at H.R. 1955, the uh, Jane Harmon's proposal um, for the Radical Radicalization and Homegrown Terrorism Prevention Act, where they wanted to set up, you know, these centers of excellence to study people and, and give secret reports to Congress. Remember that? And she, she introduced that on April 19, 2007, because even back then, her real target was the 
domestic enemies of, of uh yeah of for those regime. that don't know that's like a police code when they say april 19th that's when the that's when the war started explain that to people oh you bet i mean we stood in the green in lexington april 19th this, this uh this last april to commemorate you know as all kinds of citizens do to celebrate our heritage and also to reaffirm our oaths but According to Southern Poverty Law Center, that's some kind of sinister indication that we are that we are extremists because supposedly April 19th is is, is equivalent to um, celebrating Oklahoma City's uh, the blowing up of the Oklahoma City building. So you know, to, in, in their minds, that if you, if you do anything April 19th, it makes you an extremist, not an American. Well, the feds, <laughs> the, the globalists hate America. That's why they burned Waco on April 19th and use special forces against those children. We have the congressional documents with Delta Force there. And that's why they bombed Oklahoma City on April 19th, was to take that day away from us. They want to take our sacred days and expropriate them and turn it into a day of victimization for their red coat system. Well, they, they, they want to demonize it. And they, want to, they want to erase our own history. Um, so here's what's happening. It's what she wanted to do is being done anyway, even though the bill didn't pass. And Southern Poverty Law Center is just another uh, facet of that. They are acting as the uh, Gestapo uh, secret police wing to go and label people, um, it, instead of having the, the FBI do it directly, they do it for them. And then the DHS feeds off of their fake little reports and comes up with their own report. And then you've got, then you've got Southern Poverty Law Center then citing the DHS report they helped write. I mean, it's this, it's this vicious circle like, like a puppeteer with two puppets in his hand. It's all the same puppet master. So, and, and, and the whole point is to demonize, marginalize, Make someone a target, make them outside of the society's protection, and then they stick the dogs on you. Then they stick the military on you if they can, or they stick the police on you at least. Well, that's what Hitler did. That's what Lenin did. That's what Mao did. First, for four or five years, in every case, they demonize the group. Then they go after you. That's and, right. uh, you know, we got the secret army document that regular army is watching us and Ron Paul, and that became national news. The good news is, though, it's backfiring because the military's going, why am I spying on Wayne Paul? Why am I spying on Alex Jones? Why am I spying on Ron Paul? Why am I spying on Stuart Rhodes? Why are we following around some little old lady that's handing out yard signs to end the Fed? Uh, I mean, I really think the establishment is trying to do the same thing the bankers funded in Russia and China and Germany, and I don't see it working. No, it's not. It's backfiring. It's because they cast such a broad... It becomes absurd. It's like, well, anybody who disagrees with what's going on, or anybody who they can, they can categorize as being anywhere on the political right, is now a potential terrorist. It's just ridiculous. Like the, the extremist lexicon defined an extremist as being the same as a terrorist, and then it went down a list of all these so-called extremist groups. So we're all automatically terrorists. We're just different stripes of terrorists. This person's a anti... You know, an anti-abortion terrorist. This person here is an anti-abortion or anti-border, you know, free border terrorist. You know, so they just literally different kinds of terrorists. But they, but they pull us all together in one big giant pool of extremists, which means terrorists. And so it's so, it's so broad and so sweeping that anyone can see through it, see how ridiculous it really is, unless they're a partisan hack. Well, well, Stuart, you also noticed that everybody they list in that DHS report are people that are following something that's constitutional and it happens to be popular. 81% Gallup poll control the borders, demonized. Almost 80% say res uh, get rid of restricted gun laws. We're winning that fight. We're terrorists. Uh, upwards of 70% now are against abortion. So the majority of us are terrorists. Uh, this is an unpopular... Oh, it's like national polls show 92% believe the government killed Kennedy now. I mean, so 8% is saying 92% of us are nuts or terrorists. It right. isn't going to work anymore. I mean, look, the feds might have been able to get away with blowing up their own federal building in 95. They might have been able to get away with that now. I want to caution the black op operators and the mercenaries and others. Cheney's been caught for staging terror in the Middle East to blame it on enemies. Uh, it's coming out about Blackwater. You guys aren't going to get away with this because there's people on the inside that are going to blow the whistle from so many angles. You're going to get caught. And I really, Stuart, feel but also intellectually see the momentum has shifted. Now, for leaders like you and myself, they may imprison us or kill us. But we're actually fighting for America in the, in the final battle. I mean, in the main crossroads. So I'm not even worried about it. It's a great honor. I wish I had more lives to give. But for the people out there, if you simply take action, get the word out, expose the globalist, 
I don't see us being able to be defeated. Even if they blow up federal buildings, even if the Fed set off a nuke, even if they release some deadly flu. Stuart, I've looked at this from every angle. If the people believe they can win, it's over, we win. Oh, absolutely. And, and here's the thing. If we wake up enough of the police and military, as, we, as I said in that prior interview, then it's game over for them. You, know, you can't do these things without the, without the, um, the willing compliance of the, of the troops, you know, of the police. You know, if they have them on their side, then, then, it's, then it's still not over for us. We can still fight. But certainly it's better for us to have our brothers and sisters 